management company bought, auto pay canceled, late payments due, posted by JJR92 with updates in the comments. Apparently, in February of this year, the management company that runs my HOA was bought. I just got a bill from collections telling me that I owe the back payment, plus 90 bucks in late fees and collection fees. I had been set up on auto pay for years and I'd never missed a payment. As soon as I got that, I contacted the new management company and offered to immediately pay all the back payments, but requested for the late fees to be waived. The phone call went very poorly, and I was informed that there was no way for the late fees to be waived, and the only options were pay the assessments, collection fees, and late fee, or hire an attorney. Yes, she jumped straight to an attorney when I asked if there was any other option. She said that all the statements were posted to the online profile and were mailed out. I didn't know the online profile had changed from our old one and I don't think I missed any mail. I'm pretty good at opening important mail. Also, they had my email on file and I can confirm that I was never notified by email. When I asked for any sort of confirmation that they were sent via snail mail, she said, it's not my responsibility to prove that to you, it's your responsibility to make sure your dues are paid. I have a Facebook account that I only check it once every year or so, but I knew that our community has a pretty active Facebook group. After that call, I went on the group and I did a search for the new management company name, Horror Stories All The Way Down. I paid the fees mainly because I don't have the time or money to fight over a $90 fee. So I'm mostly here to rant, but any suggestions would be appreciated. First update. OP says, thanks a ton for the advice. I already paid the fees because I was pushing up to that date that they were going to put a lien on the house. I know, probably more scare tactics, but they worked. I also found out that the board already voted to drop them and were hiring a new management company. So while paying the late fees sucked, it's motivated me to get more involved. I'm going to start attending all the meetings I can, and there's an open seat that I might consider trying to get on. I can take an informal poll in our Facebook group. The rep on the phone said, when I asked for evidence, that they sent previous notices. So, 90% of homes got them, but you just randomly didn't? To which I replied, well, why did 10% of the homes not get them? I think she was maybe just trying to make a point, but maybe it's an actual number that she didn't just pull out of thin air. Next update from OP says, well, the board is replacing the company. This new management company bought the old one. I think the board is handling it well with replacing them, it just seems like it's taking some time. I was on a call a few weeks ago when they were presenting new management companies. They seem to be doing a decent job. Yeah, my neighbor just stepped down from being in the board. Super nice guy. But with another change in management companies and trying to fill two board seats, I want to give them some time. As I said in another comment, this has made me want to get more involved and possibly try to get on the board. I just have two small kids and one on the way, so time is valuable right now. But seeing how bad this can turn so quickly has been a motivation. I almost had a lien placed and more. And they may have been sent, I can't really verify, but they did have my banking information and I know I didn't get any email about it, which I also know they had on file. As I said in another comment, the buck stops with me. I just personally don't feel like they made a good faith effort to remit payment. And when I called to try to make it right, there was zero working with me. This is just straight up greed here. I hate when you call a company and you can't get their representative and they just want to take your money but not help you out. Best of luck to you. What have I gotten myself into? Currently in inspection period for a new home in the HOA. Posted by HOA Rogue. I've been looking for a house in Miami for the last year. I finally found an amazing house. The price was a bit high, but the house is 15 minutes from my work. It's large and almost exactly what I wanted. The one negative it's in an HOA. But this is simply a small gated community of eight houses. The seller's broker said there aren't that many rules. The main point of the HOA is to maintain the gate and the HOA hires gardeners to maintain all the front yard. All for a few hundred bucks a year. It doesn't sound like the horror stories that I read on Reddit daily. So, our offer gets accepted, and my lawyer asks for the bylaws of the HOA while we are in the inspection period. After a few days, we get the amendments. But, this isn't the main paperwork that we need. It takes eight more days until we can finally get the primary HOA paperwork. We have no idea why it would take this long. The bylaws, in my opinion, well, aren't that bad. 
You bring in your garbage containers within 24 hours of pickup, quiet hours of 10.30 p.m. on weekdays and 12.30 a.m. on weekends. No chickens and roosters, no Airbnb, any assessments over $500 must be agreed on by the majority, and so on. I am older and past my partying years, so I am all about the peace and quiet. There are additional rules that all the owners and tenants must be approved by the board, which is less great. I do like that there are no rules about adding a generator, colors a house may be, driveway rules, car must be in the garage, and so on. To me, this would be overreach. But my lawyer discovers that the HOA can't be making up most of the rules. The only thing they are allowed to govern, according to my lawyer, after reading the paperwork, is the gate and common areas. He demanded that the board president answer how he thinks the board has the power to demand all of these rules. The lawyer is suggesting that the board has gone rogue. He is concerned about what other rules will the HOA come up with. We are now waiting for the response email. So now I am wondering if I screwed up. I have until Sunday, when inspection period ends, to make a decision. Did I mention that it's a really nice house? Important comments. Big one I see is requiring a membership vote for assessments over 500 bucks. That guarantees that the reserve fund will be underfunded and the HOA will be unable to pay for replacement of something that it's obligated to replace. It sounds like this is what may be going on. Once on the board, these people tend to develop an adversarial posture towards the other homeowners, imposing on the association their own personal standards of neighborhood appearance and homeowner deportment. They will micromanage your property through means of creative interpretation and outright embellishment of the CCNRs. This sounds like the perfect mixture and storm of corruption and disaster for OP. Things could go so wrong, so if you do decide to stay at this awesome house, please be careful, OP. HOA harassment posted by Aliens Talk To Me. I own a rental property. It's a second floor condo. Every so often, the neighbor below claims that I have a leak and he wants his plumber to repair my unit for free. <laughs> no, I have a service plan with the highest rating plumbing company in our area. Each time they inspect my unit for leaks to repair and no leaks are found. At first, I did not submit the paperwork to the HOA and then the neighbor began forcing his way into the unit and showing up with a gang of men or board members. I present the paperwork and they still declare my unit is leaking. Now I send all the paperwork online. They still say my unit is leaking and I just need to let the neighbor's plumber in to make free repairs. Now I have to threaten to call the police and have them arrested for trespassing and harassment. The HOA members in the email threaten to assist the neighbor below with pressing charges against me after they have inspection paperwork from the highest rated plumber in our area. The neighbor below has made all his plumbing repairs in his unit with his repairman and would have been unable to make any plumbing repairs upstairs. There is no documentation or inspection of his repairs. What are my legal options against the HOA for encouraging my neighbor's behavior? My current plumber currently has 19,417 reviews on Google and is rated at 4.9. I have multiple rental properties and each rep they send is amazing and professional and that's why I continue to pay for their service plan. This comment says, perhaps the leak is in between the units. That may fall under the HOA's purview. OP says, I agree with you, but the neighbor downstairs allows his plumber to make undocumented and uninspected repairs, and the HOA is not being held accountable, and the HOA has never paid the neighbor for his repairs. I refuse to go along with it. I'm no lawyer, OP, and that's exactly why I'd get one to stand my ground against the HOA. Our HOA has been taken over by a rental company, posted by 3 Cat Mafia. Our neighborhood in upstate South Carolina began construction in early 2020. We purchased our home in 2021 and moved in shortly thereafter when construction on our home was finally complete. We aren't completely satisfied with our house, but we got a low rate and for a starter home, it isn't awful. The houses are close together, as is common for a new neighborhood these days, and construction was still ongoing for the rest of the neighborhood. We were told there would be about 120 houses total. About halfway into our time there, we received notice from the builder that the homes would no longer be property of the builder and that they would be turned over to a rental company and would no longer be for sale, but for rent instead. So there are about 40 or so homes that have been sold and the rest are rental homes. 
There were many questions at that time what that meant for us as homeowners, but we were assured that there would be no issues with the rental properties or the company at all and that everything would be kept separate. Within the last two months, the rental company began to stage a takeover of the HOA without informing homeowners. One very involved homeowner caught wind and demanded a meeting. We have no official HOA board, which is kind of nice because we have no busybody HOA, no strong rules and whatnot. And a meeting took place last night. I was unable to attend, but apparently the rental company representatives did not show up. But since they have majority stake in the neighborhood, they automatically are able to take over the HOA. So every rule they apply to the rental properties in the neighborhood now apply to all of the owned properties in the neighborhood as well. So far, we are unsure what this means. Lawyers are being contacted. If I had known this was ever going to happen, I would not have bought here. It feels like a bait and switch. I was fine without almost absent HOA previously. I don't want to be subject to rental rules when I'm not even a renter. Oh my goodness, straight up your answer here is lawyer up. I mean, they are going way above where they should be. And this is something that's above your pay grade to be able to tackle by yourself. Let me know what you think. I forced two board members off of my HOA for thinking that they can pick on me in a meeting. Posted by Brain Tumor Boy. I don't really pay attention to my homeowners association or HOA. It's a new community, under two years old, and I only went to my first meeting because a neighbor I've become buddies with told me that the HOA was being shady. My undergrad degree is in political science, so being a government structure and process nerd, I figured I'd check out the shenanigans for myself. At the meeting, one of the board members was being confronted about something that they had done. Initially, I had no clue what they were talking about. But by listening, I quickly understood the context and the scope. The board member responds to the questions by yelling and using pretty abusive language towards the residents who were asking him questions about what he did. That's a red flag. During his tirade, he told the people confronting him that he didn't answer to him. Second board member chimed in saying that we were powerless and repeats the, we don't have to answer to you. Second red flag, I'd had enough. I raise my hand, and the president, which is the nice board member and the good guy in general, recognizes me and he gives me the floor. Since it's my first time there, the fight paused and it got quiet. It was kind of weird. I simply but clearly told the two jerk board members that, in fact, we are the only people that they answer to in this role. The first jerk board member didn't like that and instantly threw abusive behavior towards me and started to try to bully me. Now, I'm a sleeping bear. I don't mess with anyone, but if someone messes with me, I make it my mission to let them know I can be the bigger jerk. After his response to me, another resident said to him, We've lost faith in you. You should step down. The board member replied, I've lost faith in you, which made absolutely no sense. A second resident said basically to step down or we'll recall you. The board member said, You'll have to force me off. I then said, well, that's what we'll freaking do then, fine. In the next few days, I analyzed my state's HOA laws and my HOA's articles of incorporation, bylaws, and covenants. I realized the election of the two jerk board members was completely against the bylaws. So I wrote a demand letter to the HOA's attorney stating that the election of these two was in violation of our bylaws and they must be removed from the board. The attorney agreed with my analysis and the two members were forced off of the board. Anticlimactic, but go government structure and process nerds. The HOA takes over and destroys my property, but I'm not even part of the HOA. Click on the video on your screen, you don't want to miss the fallout of this crazy story, and I'll see you there.